Hi there, thanks for joining us for Together. I'm Karen Lee. So a year ago, Together debuted right here on CBS4, and we have shared with you stories of incredible people in our communities who are coming together to do truly remarkable things. A year later, we're proud to keep that going. So sit back, relax, and enjoy some good news for a change. One of our stories today involves a little girl who is teaching us all what kindness looks like. I just know you're going to love her and what she's all about. Kelly Worthman introduces us to Peyton Schaefer. Wait, I helped those two? You did. Peyton Schaefer is all smiles. That's because she knows she's making a difference. I want to, like, make sure they live and stuff. Peyton raised money to help a horse rescue in northern Colorado. People will say, oh, I know it's not much. Everything means something cool. here. How a school project helped her decide to come together for Colorado. Well, as many of you know, being a parent is rewarding, but it can also be really tough. That's why volunteers are stepping in to give some much deserving families a break. As Joel Hillen found out, these parents are really special. He was three days old, and we have him, and we've had him since then. Allison and David Karecki are foster parents. They admit it's not an easy job. Having three is a handful. <laughs> They're always grateful for some help. Having organizations like this come alongside, it's very encouraging. On this day, they got four hours to enjoy to themselves. Four hours to do whatever we want and have a minute to breathe. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. We'll let you know who made this time off possible later on Together. That is really beautiful. Well, who doesn't like to visit Denver? We have learned that Denver is home to hundreds of conventions every year, and one of them brings sci-fi fans together to celebrate some of their favorite shows and movies. It's called Starfest. And this year, a group of Klingons did more than just sit around and talk about Star Trek. We go out, we help. Toys for Tots, Ronald McDonald House. But today, they're helping someone else. We're collecting slightly used and glasses that no one needs anymore. Their donation drive is a big hit at Starfest. This is our first day of collecting, and our box is already full. Where these glasses will go? That's coming up on Together. Well, long gone are the days of school only being about tests and grades. Now it's also about being a better person in our communities. So what does that look like? Schools across Colorado are incorporating the Kindness Project to add to their curriculum. The goal is to teach kids about the importance of giving back. Kelly Worthman shows us one girl's donation to a horse rescue was a perfect example of that. That's you. It's easy to see horses have a special place in Peyton Schaefer's heart. I love horses. And it seems horses love her right back. Dead to spot. So when she was assigned a kindness project at school, this third grader from Thornton knew exactly what she wanted to do. We set up a stand and we made hot chocolate and um, we got carrots for the horses. At a local stable, Peyton sold treats to raise money for horses in need. It was actually a huge blizzard when it happened. With her brother's help, Peyton collected $100, then sent a check with this letter to Colorado Horse Rescue in Longmont. I was quickly sharing it around the whole office. It was an unexpected and heartwarming surprise to the nonprofit, especially since Peyton had never been to CHR before. So the organization invited her family for a special so visit. He, he just wasn't being fed enough, so he was hundreds of pounds underweight. Peyton had a pretty good idea that her donation would help horses like Little Bit, but what she didn't realize, her donation also helped save a life. Wait, I helped those two? You did. <laughs> you did. You absolutely did. The money Peyton raised went straight to CHR's auction fund. We are able to go to a local livestock auction and bid on a horse that would otherwise go to slaughter. Peyton had no idea <laughs> horses were sold to meat buyers in Colorado. She says it gives her kindness it's project an even greater purpose. I want to like make sure they live and stuff. We can't exist without people like Peyton. <laughs> people will say, oh, I know it's not much. Everything means something cool. here. <laughs> Kelly Worthman joins us now to talk a little bit more about Peyton and what she's all about. And uh, I know you're a horse lover too. So yes. Seeing the 
the smiles on the smile on Peyton's face. You can tell that just really touched her being out there. You know, she was so excited. Her brother and her mom tagged along okay. to learn a little bit more about what happens at Colorado Horse Rescue, where money like what she raised goes to. But you know, when you're around horses, I can only speak for myself, but it was pretty evident with yeah, Peyton and right. her family. But when you're around horses, mm -hmm. it just brings a lot of joy. It's also very calming and very therapeutic at the yeah, same time. You can tell that. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about her donation. How mm -hmm. much of a difference does that make? You know, every dollar does really make a difference at mm -hmm. Colorado Horse Rescue as a volunteer. I see that yeah. happen. Um, she raised a hundred dollars and it went it, it can go towards things like food or getting tack or anything that really we need because we thrive on donations. That's really what we need to be able to keep helping all those horses that we have. Yeah, and, and put the smiles on everyone's faces. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about the, the kindness projects. Mm -hmm. Really a great idea. It really it is. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great way um, what Peyton's mom kind of explained. It's for the the students to learn what they can do within their communities, but also kind of an anti-bullying campaign yeah. at the same time to really see how they can interact students better together in their classrooms, but outside of school as well. Yeah, and they can see how far reaching that they can be. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, and get difference. to know different things that are happening in their community that yeah. benefit other people or animals in this case. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you so yeah, much for introducing us to her. We love her. Two groups coming together to promote reading in a Denver neighborhood. Kids who check out books at the Sun Valley Youth Center Library are also getting a bag of books to keep. Now, this might not sound like a big deal to you, but for these kids, getting to not only have more than one book to take home, but getting to keep them is truly magical. Getting into first grade, this will be something that, you know, it's going to give her a head start um, because a lot of the books that we have here, they're not only for her grade level, but it's going to help her development or develop and have, you know, stronger you know, vocabulary going, you know, forward. I truly believe the future of our world depends on the education of our children, and I know that I can change the world one book at a time, and this is my mission, is to change the landscape of literacy. Ah, oh, and we love that. We believe that, too. The group Gals That Give raised $5,400 for to make the giveaway possible. Sponsors then match 50% of that donation. Well, one thing I love about the show is that we are all reminded that we can all contribute, whatever our age. In Commerce City, a 14-year-old boy became a lifesaver this week. His sister and her children ended up with carbon monoxide poisoning. It was Alexis and his quick thinking that got them the help they needed. As Kathy Walsh found out, his family is forever grateful. We're glad you're okay. 14-year-old Alexis Arietta is now forever connected to this North Glen ambulance crew. He did an amazing job this morning. Yeah. So without him, it would have been a totally different story. A horrible tragedy. Claudia Olivos and her three children might never have made it to this hyperbaric chamber to be treated for carbon monoxide poisoning. He did really save every, their lives. The saga began in Commerce City just before 7 a.m. Alexis and nine-year-old Jaylene Flores were dropped off at his sister Claudia's house before school. His three-year-old niece had stomach pains. It was really bad because she was like screaming in pain. And 29-year-old Claudia was ill. She said that she couldn't move. 11-year-old Marcus fainted. And he was unconscious in the living room. Alexis called 911. When I yelled for everyone to go outside, it was pretty chaotic. Alexis ran back in for five-year-old Abraham. All were lying in the driveway when the ambulance arrived. Most of them were crying. While the emergency crew worked on the family, they say Alexis helped calm the little kids. He's definitely a hero. Anybody in my position would do the same thing. Alexis wants everyone to have working carbon monoxide detectors in their homes. If I wouldn't have been there, uh, I'm pretty sure my sister wouldn't have been here today. Alexis is so humble, too. Well, we have learned that it was a faulty furnace that was the source of that carbon monoxide poisoning. This story is a good reminder to make sure that you have carbon monoxide detectors in your home and be sure that you check those batteries and replace them. Well, we love to celebrate what our young people are doing. That's why we give out the Future Leader Award. Wait until you meet this month's winner. We're going to tell you about the amazing things she's doing both in and out of the classroom. In chemistry, I can explore my curiosity because there's still so much unknown. There's still so much to be discovered. Together with Karen Lee, sponsored by Canvas Credit Union. We're Canvas, and we've got you covered, Colorado. Go live. Well, every month we recognize a special high school student who excels in science, technology, engineering, and math. 
Lord Whitney joins me now to introduce us to this month's future leader, winner, and Lauren, these young people, they are so impressive. They are amazing. And Julie Pham is a senior at Westminster High School. She's on her way to change the world through biomedical or biochemical engineering. Last summer, she interned at a lab at CU Boulder, and that got her interested in the field, and she really hopes to make her mark. So hopefully one day I can create a medicine, a cure, innovation that can help others at least live their life a little bit easier. Well, besides her interest in science, Julia is also class president. With that job, she coordinates community service projects and even launched a mental health initiative at her school. Julia will be heading to the Colorado School of Mines in the fall to pursue a degree in biochemical engineering. And School of Mines is one of the best schools in the yeah. country for engineering, so she's certainly going to make a big impact at that school. Yeah, I love it, too. She talked about she finds so many things. She's curious about so many things, and that seems to be um, an underlying uh, quality to all of these kids, right? I was just going to say that that is something that we find when we interview all these kids. They just want to dig deeper and they want to know more and that just keeps leading them down the trail to find mm -hmm. out more stuff and they're really making a big impact. So if you have a student, you just head to yeah. cbsdenver.com in your life and you can uh, submit to potentially become a future leader. Yeah, we want to hear about them. Yeah, Laura. they're really great kids. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. thank you, Lauren. We appreciate it. Well, don't you feel a little wasteful when you leave food on your plate when you eat out? Well, every year, hundreds of thousands of pounds of perfectly good restaurant food just gets tossed in the trash. But we can all stop that. The new program that is cutting down on food waste. It's humbling how much we can solve our own problem just by retooling distribution and planning um, and just thinking about what we're doing. Up on this week's Together for Colorado calendar. Tuesday, it is the third annual Taste of Old Town Arvada. Sample some great food and you'll support the Arvada Community Food Bank. Thursday, join Girls Inc. at the My Bold Future Luncheon. Donations will help the nonprofit with its mission of inspiring young women. Saturday, learn more about diabetes and connect with others who are living with the disease. The Epic Conference at the Weston Downtown is sponsored by the Children's Diabetes Foundation. For more information on these events, all you have to do is visit the Together for Colorado section of CBSDenver.com. Well, did you know that about 40% of the food in the United States is never eaten? But at the same time, one in eight Americans struggles to put enough food on the table. It's kind of shameful, isn't it? Well, with that in mind, Denver is working to change that. City has teamed up with nine restaurants to tackle food waste. One way to do that, ask diners if they want bread before bringing it to the table. Restaurants will also donate food that they don't use and compost things that cannot be donated. We can literally make sure that not a single person in our country ever wonders where their next meal is going to come from just by some very simple maneuvering and some higher levels of thought and mindfulness with what we do with the food that we use every day. Restaurants taking part in this new program include El House, Ohana Island Kitchen, and Black Eye Coffee. The plan is to expand this program citywide by the fall. Well, every week here at CBS4, we highlight a child in foster care through our Wednesday's Child Series. Well, today we want to take a moment to highlight the foster parents. They work hard to provide a safe and loving home for these children. And like any parent, sometimes they need a break. This weekend, they got one, thanks to the help of volunteers. Joel Hillen reports. So we've been fostering for four years. Um, we've had 18 kids. We've adopted four of them. 18 foster kids and counting for Jacqueline and Maria Alderette. We talked about having kids of our own, but then we saw that there was so many children out there that needed a safe and loving environment, so then we we're like, oh, we can totally do that. You know, there's so many kids that need homes, um, even if it's just temporarily, that we wanted to be able to help them. Six foster support organizations came together to provide four hours of child care and activities for 40 foster families, including the Alderettes. Being able to come and bring the kids and just take a wifey date day, is amazing. Foster parents Allison and David Karecki were grateful as well. Just all these things that take a load off of us and then give us four hours, <laughs> four hours to do whatever we want and have a minute to breathe. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. The Koreckis have two biological children and accepted a three-day-old baby when they entered the foster care system about a year and a half ago. We're not alone in this journey. There are so many people that 
help, but having organizations like this come alongside, it's very encouraging. All of this help does not go unnoticed. Seriously, like from the bottom of my heart, thank you, because without the support of groups, I don't know how people can do it. Mm, that's amazing. If you would like to learn more about what it takes to be a foster parent, just call the Adoption Exchange at the numbers on your screen. You'll also find all the information you need at cbsdenver.com. Coloradans came together last weekend to get rid of their old medications. It was all part of the National Prescription Drug Take Back Day. What you can do if you still have some old pills that you need to get rid of. Catch the latest episodes of Together as well as your favorite Together for Colorado stories anytime at CBSDenver.com. Sci fi fans headed to the hotel in the tax center last weekend for the 42nd annual Star Fest convention. Some Trekkies use this event as an opportunity to come together for Colorado. They're doing it through a program called Klingons Have Vision. Photojournalist Mark Nitro explains. Klingons are an alien species from Star Trek who hold honor and glory above all else. Nuktak Uchtapo. Where is the chocolate? We're just a group of people who like Star Trek and Klingons and sci fi. So you're okay hanging out with the Klingons? I am a Klingon. Oh, you are? Yeah. You don't look like a Klingon. I'm a Klingon, but I'm a member of the Klingons. We go out, we help. Toys for Tots, Ronald McDonald House. Captain, incoming message. We're doing a Klingons Have Vision campaign. So we're collecting slightly used and glasses that no one needs anymore. And we're going to donate these to the Lions Club. I grew up poor. To give back to the community after receiving when I was younger is only right as a human. And then because it's something that I enjoy, it's not just a personal passion, it's a labor of love. We are collecting glasses for the Lions Club, Klingons have vision. This is our first day of collecting, and our box is already full, so we're looking forward to collecting many more over the weekend. The donations are just one way of us paying the community back. We're honored to be able to help those who need this to, to be able to see. And look at all of those glasses. It's just spectacular. Starfest convention only lasted throughout the weekend, but if you have an old pair of eyeglasses that you would like to donate, the Lions Club of Denver has donation boxes all across the Front Range set up for you. You'll find the list at cbsdenver.com. The National Drug Take Back Day is a way for people to safely get rid of their old medications. Fort Collins Police, just one of many agencies that took part in it, people could just drive up to get rid of their prescriptions. Officers ended up collecting 372 pounds of pills. And if you missed it, the department accepts them at its front desk every day year round. Denver Health has boxes full of brand new toys thanks to a beauty queen. Miss Colorado teen Abby Barnes organized a toy drive for the hospital. She ended up collecting 80 cartons of things like books, all kinds of stuffed animals. Really great work, Abby, and look at those little smiles. We know the toys are going to brighten the days of children who are in the hospital and they could use a little bit of sunshine. Well, thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Together. You know where to find us next week. We'll look forward to seeing you there again. We'll be back here telling again even more stories from our community of people doing remarkable things. Until then, I want to take you to the Brighton 27 School District, where a teacher saw the new four-day school week as a way to get students interested in music. So she started an orchestra academy, and you could tell the kids are really loving it.